Hello, my name is Dallin and I'm a fourth year medical student. Today, I wanted to talk about what you can do over the summer between your first and second year of med school to score above a 250 on step one. So with that, let's talk about the five things that you should do between your M1 and M2 year to score above a 250 on USMLE step one. Now the first thing that you should do if you haven't already done so is buy first aid. Now first aid is the USMLE step one Bible and, and for good reason. Every fact that you need to be tested on, that you need to know, is in first aid. Uh, a friend and I would often joke that it would sometimes seem that you got a question out of left field and that there was no way that it was covered in first aid and then you'd go back through the book and you'd realize that it, in fact it was covered and if you had known that fact you would have gotten that answer correct. Now once you have first aid the second thing that you should do is review the topics that were taught during your M1 year. So whether that was anatomy, hematology, bugs and drugs, um, cardiology, pulmonology, whatever it was that was taught during your M1 year, go through first aid and review those subjects. Now, of course, you can complement this with other resources like Pathoma, Sketchy, Boards and Beyond. I just personally only used first aid to go through this and Sketchy for the micro, but uh, I mostly only used first aid. Now, as I had briefly mentioned, first aid is more like an encyclopedia. It is not like a textbook. Uh, it lends itself much more to looking up and referencing facts than just straight up reading. So sometimes you'll hear people post on Reddit that they reread first aid six, seven, eight, nine times. I personally do not think that this is helpful. So I would not recommend rereading first aid as a study strategy. In fact, I would never recommend rereading as a study strategy because research shows that you only retain about 10% of what you read. Instead, what I do recommend, which is point number three, is that you change those topics from first aid and create them as an Anki deck. So I've already made several videos of why I love Anki so much and how I actually make note cards from first aid. So if you're interested in seeing how I did that, you can check that out here. Actively learning through flashcards is a much more effective way to learn. In fact, students will score a letter grade and a half better on material that they review by quizzing than, they re than if they review it passively by rereading or watching a presentation. Now, while I prefer people to make their own flashcards because there is it's an active process and you're more likely to retain a note card or flash card that you made versus one that was pre-made, I am not opposed to using pre-made decks like Zonky. Now, whether you download or make your own deck, it's gonna be a lot of flashcards and this can be overwhelming. So I suggest making a preset number of new cards each day that will be reasonable for you to do so that you will never say, oh, I'm too busy today, I don't have time to study. For me, that was a hundred new flashcards per day. And when you're making that, when I made that consideration, I didn't just think about the new cards, I thought that about the cards that I would then have to review. So please take that into consideration when setting a number of new flashcards that you would like to learn each day. So this brings me to point number four, and that is to get a question bank software. Now at this point, I really do not think it matters whether you buy Kaplan, RX, or UWorld. What does matter is that you are getting used to the formatting of the test. You need to understand how they are going to ask questions about material that you've learned about and how they are going to display answer choices. Now, this is important because it's gonna get you used to those second and third order questions that USMLE likes to ask. Now, personally, if I were to do this, I would buy something like RX or UWorld, but like I said, I don't think it really matters. Um, I would just spend the extra $100, I think it is, for the year subscriptions versus the six month subscription on UWorld. Uh, that way I could just get used to the best testing format. And then I would only test yourself on material that you've already reviewed. Now, as you get further along, I would suggest that you do the questions randomly because that's how step one will be. 
But for now, I think it makes sense to just test yourself on material that you've already gone over. So if you've already covered cardiology, I would just do the card cardiology questions. Now this is because if you are getting in 20, 30 percent at the beginning because you did it on random and you're getting all these neurology questions or GI questions which you haven't covered yet, it can be very discouraging and it can actually make your studying counterproductive. <music> Now, for point number five, and this is to do something that you're passionate about during your M1 to M2 summer. So whether that's research, uh, global health, uh, or simply taking a river rafting trip that you've always wanted to do, I suggest that you do it now because you're never going to have this much free time to pursue something that you are passionate about. Now, obviously, these are very broad suggestions, but if you are interested, you can go ahead and email me and we can talk about something that would be specific to your schedule. Uh, so that's going to be the end of today's video. As always, thank you for watching. If you're interested to see uh, how I made my dedicated schedule or uh, how it was that I studied for step one as a whole, go ahead and check out those videos here. Uh, and always, if you like the video, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. Uh, if there's something that you would like me to change or do differently, please let me know in the comments below.